Okay, ladies and gentlemen of Algebra, this is Unit 8, Quiz 1 Review, and kind of what we're looking at is everything and anything having to do with rationals. So, when you're starting off, remember when it says simplifying rational expressions, simplify does not mean decimals, okay, no decimals. That means you've got to have either whole numbers, if it's a perfect square, or you've got to have a number on the outside and a number underneath. So, Whenever I see 125, I'm automatically thinking about 25. So I can split that into 5 and 25. So this is like square root of 20, square root of 5 and square root of 25. Well, the square root of 25 is just 5. Okay, 5 times 5 gives you 25. So this simplified is going to be nothing more than 5 square root of 5. All right, number 2, square root of 80. 80 is... You know, anytime I split apart 80, I can do that into 4 and 20. I like 4 because 4 is a nice, easy, perfect square to remember. But then I've also got to realize that I've got to split up 20 into 4 and 5. So 4, 4. So this is like square root of 4 times square root of 4 times square root of 5. So square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5 is square root of 5. Some weird looking decimal I don't want to deal with. So that's going to be 4 square root of 5. That will be my simplified answer. Uh, the other way to kind of realize this is if you're clever, you can realize 80 splits into square root of 16 and 5. So that's going to be 4 square root of 5. So 112 over 175, and then 24 over 54 for number 3 and number 4. The first thing I tell kids to do before they try and simplify that is, can I make it easier to deal with? And the fact of that matter is, yes, I can. So here's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 112 over 175, and I want to simplify it first. All right? I, want to, I can divide, actually, both of these by 7. And what I do then is I get 16 over 25. So there's my simplified answer. Now, this is way easier to deal with. So square root of 16 is going to be 4. Square root of 25 is going to be 5. So it's going to be 4 fifths. So 24 over 54 is going to be both divided by 6. So that's just going to be 4 ninths. Square root of 4 over square root of 9 is going to be 2 over 3. Now, whenever, whenever you throw variables into it, you got to take this kind of two pieces at a time and then put them back together. So 32 splits into square root of 16, square root of 2. P cubed can be split into P squared and just P. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 2 can't, be, can't do anything with that. Square root of P squared is going to be just P. Square root of P, I can't do anything with that. So now these two have been square rooted, so they can go on the outside. Then underneath, I've got a 2 and a P, so I can put those together. All right. Now, number 6 is pretty similar. I want to take 147, and I want to take P to the fourth. Well, 147 can be split up into 49 and 3. Now you can mess around, figure out what... Um, your squares are, you can mess around with a couple different squares, try and divide by the different squares, 4, 9, 16, 25, and figure out what might work. So square root of 49 is 7. Square root of 3 is not a perfect square, it's got to stay there. Square root of p squared is p, square root of p squared is p. So when I multiply all these, it's going to look like this. There's my answer. So now, when I start doing adding and subtracting, 3 square root of 6 minus 4 square root of 6. They are both square root of 6, so this is like saying take 3 minus 4, so that's going to be negative 1 square root of 6, or just negative square root of 6. Number 8, 10 square root of 7 plus 12 square root of 7 is going to be 2 square root of 7. Pretty straightforward. I don't touch a square root of 7. I treat it like it's a variable, like it's an x or something. Uh, number 9 and number 10, when you're doing this, what you've got to realize is that that can be simplified. All right, square root of 27 can be simplified. I can break that up into 9 and 3. Square root of 9 is 3, so that's going to be 3 square root of 3 minus 3 square root of 3. So that's going to be 0. 
Number three, I can actually simplify all of these. Square root of 18, or 3 square root of 18, that's 3 times square root of 9 times square root of 2. So that's 3 times 3 times square root of 2. So that's going to be 9 square root of 2. 3 square root of 12 is going to be 3 times square root of 4 times square root of 3. So that's going to be 3 times 2 times square root of 3. So that's going to be 6 square root of 3. 2 square root of 27 is going to be 2 times square root of 9 times square root of 3. 2 times 3 times square root of 3. So this becomes 9 square root of 2 plus 6 square root of 3 plus 6 square root of 3. So I'm going to say that that is 9 square root of 2 plus 12 square root of 3. So now when I'm dividing underneath, I've got to rationalize the denominator. All right, so for square root of 3 over 2, you know, that can be rewritten as square root of 3 over square root of 2. I cannot leave square root of 2 in the denominator. That's called rationalizing. I cannot do it. So I've got to multiply by what's considered 1. Square root of 2 over square root of 2 technically is 1, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply here and multiply here. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 is square root of 6. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, which is really just 2. So I have square root of 6 over 2. That's my answer. For number 12, I'm looking at that, and right away I see that I can divide 45 and 27. So I'm going to break that down into 5 thirds. Once again, I'm going to multiply by 1 because this is going to be square root of 9, so it's going to be 3. There's my answer. Now, don't get in the habit of thinking that you can simplify this. You can't. The square root of 15 is different than 15. Okay, A lot of kids will see this and they'll think, oh, it's the square root of 5. No, this is underneath the square root. You can't touch it unless you bring it out, and you only can do that by taking the square root. Number 13, you're going to distribute this, and you're going to put together what's underneath. So that's going to be square root of 15 plus 2 square root of 18. Now realize that you can break apart square root of 18 into square root of 9, square root of 2. You can't do anything with square root of 15. That's stuck how it is. So now this becomes 2 times 3 times square root of 2. So that's going to be 6 square root of 2. Uh, number 14 is a little bit of foiling, a little factoring. So if you make your table, square root of 3, square root of 6, ooh, square root of 3, square root of, square root of 3, minus square root of 6, you'll get square root of 9, square root of 18, minus square root of 18, minus square root of 36. So now square root of 18 minus square root of 18 cancel out. So I'm left with square root of 9 minus square root of 36. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 36 is 6. So after all that noise, I end up with negative 3. Uh, number 15 and 16. Solve by using zero product property. That means I need to factor. Factor, factor, factor. So I need to take 7 times 8. And I get negative 56. I need to multiply to get negative 56. And subtract to get 10. Well, if playing around a little bit, I think I can do that. I get negative 14 and 4. 14 times 4 gives you 56. 14, negative 14 plus 4 gives you negative 10. So rewrite this. So factor, or parentheses, parentheses. So that will give me 7p, p minus 2, plus 4, p minus 2, equals 0. So 7p plus 4 equals 0. And P minus 2 equals 0. So P's got to equal 2, or P is going to equal negative 4 sevenths. So that's my answer. 16 is going to be the same kind of idea. Negative 30 with 13. So that's going to give me 15 negative 2. So 10D squared plus 15D minus 2D minus 3 equals 0. 
parentheses, and when I do that, I switch the sign because it's subtraction. So that's going to be 5d, and that will give me 2d plus 3, minus nothing, 2d plus 3. So that's like saying 5d minus 1 times 2d plus 3 equals 0. So each part equals 0. So d is going to be equal to 1 fifth, or d is going to be equal to negative 3 halves. That is your review, ladies and gentlemen. So we already did those two. Those are the ones we started with. So thank you for playing. Please be prepared for the upcoming quiz.